when, when you think about Albus's influence on me, you have to remember that I'm a teacher as well as an artist, right? And Albus is probably one of the most important art educators that we've had in this country. You know, in his relationship to Black Mountain College and to Yale and all that sort of stuff, but also his, his teaching methodologies have affected almost every artist I know. We all went to school doing those Albers color exercises. Like that was part of our education. So it's not just like, oh, I look at, looked at his work and I liked it, right? There was something about the way that he helped me develop an understanding of color that is part of my practice of being an artist. And then, you know, him as a teacher, the level of generosity and I don't hesitate to use the word love that he had for his students is something that I think of as a model for being an educator. Yeah. Well, when you think about homage to the square and homage to the auction block and how they relate to each other directly, right? A lot of people think that I'm somehow um, critiquing Albers or judging him or something. And I, I don't think of the work that way. And, and people can think whatever they want to think. It, it, the work is open enough to have multiple interpretations. But for me, I really started to think about the square as a given, right? Why is that the shape of modernism? Because it's equal on all four sides, because it's endlessly reproducible, it's cellular, it references the grid. Okay, I get the square, right? What made the square possible? What made it possible? And I think about the uncompensated, unacknowledged labor of enslaved people that built the wealth of this nation, that made the modern world possible. To me, that's the square, that's, a, that's the shape that's at the heart of that square, right? And that's why in some of the paintings, the, the auction block shape is very close in color to the outer square. Sometimes it's in a higher contrast because I'm trying to talk about what is hidden and what's exposed, you know, and using the pure language of color to talk about those things, to talk about how color really relates to each other. That thing is red because this thing is blue. And it's a very simple idea, but as Albers has shown us, like it, that those relationships are endlessly complex. And Albers, in his genius, in organizing color around these sort of modernist shapes, these quote-unquote neutral modernist shapes, allowed me, years later, to see that open space and think, I can reinscribe that. And I can tell the rest of the story that wasn't Albers's to tell, it was mine to tell, right? And so that's the, that's the sort of relationship between modernism and the auction law, right? You don't have... America without enslavement. You don't have the modernist development of the culture without enslavement. And to pretend, to pretend otherwise is kind of crazy. I think that when we talk about abstraction and figuration, what we're really talking about is something that involves the body and something that doesn't, right? And all my work involves the body, right? The, the auction block paintings are about the bodies of people who have been sold and trafficked. The portraits and the cruisers and the killers and all those people are about particular people and particular bodies, right? And I really don't like talking about bodies in that way because I, I'm not, um, I don't separate the body from the person, right? I'm not really painting bodies, I shouldn't say that, I should say people, right? Whether the people are imaginary or the people are based in people I know or people like in killers, people who are based in history, I'm interested in embodiment. I'm not interested in, um, in illustration, right? And so all of it is about the corpus. It's about the physicality. It's about the physicality of the paint. The auction block paintings are, are hand-painted. They're not, there's no tape. There's no, um, there's no stencils or anything. So the wonky lines and the weird ways the colors line up, all that stuff is evidence of a human presence. Uh, ev evidence of a human activity that's involved in the making, you know? And so while the auction block paintings may not show a corpus, they actually show evidence of a human activity, just like the figure paintings do. They're evidence of, of that we're here, that people are here. Yeah. 
You know, as far as the evolution of the work, it's really funny. Like, Albers made uh, a bunch of homage to the square paintings that were four feet square, right? And everyone was like, Joseph, the scale, like, it's just so amazing. Like, what, it's such a radical change. Like, why did you shift? And he said, well, I sold some paintings, so I was able to buy a bigger car. So I was able to make bigger paintings, right? So I, I think opportunity creates opportunity, right? You know, and I think that, you know, no matter what happens to me, I would be making the same work. I think I'm interested in larger paintings, not for the sake of making larger paintings, I'm really not. The experience of doing Freddie Gray on the side of a building, that was really altering for me. I never thought of myself as someone making work at that scale, but now I think about it. And not just public work, I mean work for exhibition, you know, in galleries and in museum spaces at that scale. So I'm thinking about that. I'm also thinking about um, how, how the work lives outside of the white cube. Like, can the work live in the world differently? I'm not sure, I, I don't know. Um, and that's one of the great things about being an artist is that you get to find these things out. Like, you, I, I don't know, sometimes I, I do things to see if I can do them, right? Because I don't know if it will work. And that's the great thing about the experimentation, the exploration of being an artist. It's like, is this a good idea? Mm, no, it's a bad idea. You know, but you don't know until you make it. And so, giving myself the opportunity to make those things and to see how they function in the world, that's what I'm most excited about. It's really important that paintings have a life at different distances, right? So when you see one of the auction block paintings, or any painting for that matter, you know, not just mine, you have the experience of seeing it at a distance, and then when you come up to it, it should offer you something more, right? And what I try to build into each painting is the paintings start out as a, a grid, a 10 by 10 grid that's drawn right on the surface of the canvas. And then the, the separate squares are developed, and then the auction block form is developed, and then it's painted. So when you look at the paintings, you can see that history throughout the paintings, the, like the sort of wavering lines or things like that, because that was really important to me. Because it's very easy to cut a bunch of stencils and make a bunch of prints and, and do that sort of stuff, but that's not what the work is. And I think that in doing that, that's my homage to Albers, is to really be connected to him, you know, with a palette knife, making those paintings, you know, the labor of it was really, really important to him, and that's really, really important to me.